the last lecture we discussed the variation of small g that is acceleration due to gravity when we go out into space or when we go deep into the earth. We also discussed the gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. We shall start again with gravitational potential and derive the expression for the escape speed. Uh, I shall explain all these things as we go along. The potential energy we already calculated for a unit mass which is u equal to minus g m by r. Uh, this is at the surface of the earth and r let me remind you is the radius of the earth. Now suppose we go to a short height h from the surface then what happens? Then we can write the gravitational energy u is equal to minus g m m by r. You see m is the mass of the particle by r. r small r is capital R plus h. So, r plus h. We can take capital R outside r into 1 plus h by r and this becomes minus g m m by r into 1 minus h by r using binomial theorem and using the fact that h is small compared with the radius of the earth. So, therefore, we can write finally the gravitational potential energy of a mass m at a distance h from the surface of the earth as minus g m m by r plus g m m by r squared into h. We recognize that the first term on the right as the potential energy of m at the earth's surface this minus g m m by r we have learnt already is the potential energy of the mass m at the surface of the earth. And this extra term is g h m g h because of m and this g m by r squared is g therefore, the extra term is m g h. Thus, the difference in the potential energy of the body as it goes to a height h from the surface of the earth is delta u equal to m g h. That means, effectively we have put the gravitational potential energy of the mass to be 0 at the surface of the earth. Remember that since it is a potential difference or the difference in the potential energy that matters, we can take the 0 of energy at any place we find convenient. So, we can fix the 0 of potential energy at the surface of the earth. Then we can call the potential energy of a particle at a height h as u equal to m g h. That is, if I take a particle to a height h from the surface of the earth, then it gains in energy which is m g h. When the particle falls back, it gives up this potential energy in the form of kinetic or other energies. We also recall that gravitational force is a central force. It is also a conservative force. So, if we go from A to B covering a height h, then the gain in potential energy is simply m g h does not depend upon the path taken. And if a particle falls from B to A, then its potential energy decreases by m g h no matter what path it follows. Now, since the energy of the mass m was 0 at infinity, in the process of falling to a position r in the gravitational field, an energy equal to the magnitude to its potential energy r is released. You see, since the potential energy is g m by r, when it falls from infinity, this energy is released. We have already seen this in the earlier lecture that when a particle falls in the gravitational field, it loses potential energy but gains other forms of energy, including the energy that it releases. Now, for a body bound to another massive body such as the planet bound to the sun, the total energy must obviously be negative. Why is it negative? So, that we need to do work to remove this uh, uh, body free of the gravitational potential. So, E is equal to half mv squared that is kinetic energy plus potential energy minus g m m by r and the sum of these two must be less than 0 for the particle to be bound. For example, for the earth to be bound to the sun, 
the total energy must be negative so that energy is required to be given to the earth to remove it from the touches of the sun now since the gravitational field of the earth or sun or of, of uh, whatever body you consider is there and it always attracts particles towards it is there a way in which we can make a particle free so that it goes out of the gravitational field say of the earth let us see whether it is possible or not you know that if you throw a ball up it always comes back you throw and it comes back you throw with a higher speed it again comes back if you throw with a still higher speed it might go into an orbit around the earth but it will be still bound to the earth this orbit is within the gravitational field of the earth so how can we release the body from the gravitational field we'll see that we have to give minimum speed to the particle so that it escapes the gravitational field and this minimum speed required by a body to escape the gravitational field of the earth is called the escape speed in fact why of the earth from any other part uh, surface say a particle can have escape velocity from the moon or from say another planet so whenever the the minimum speed required by a body to escape the gravitational field of another body is called the escape speed it's obvious that the escape speed from the earth would depend upon the mass and radius of the earth because the strength of the field is dependent on the mass of the earth and the radius of the earth therefore the escape speed speed would also depend upon this so let us write the energy of a particle on the surface of the earth it has kinetic energy half mv squared it has potential energy minus g m m by r therefore this is the total energy and we have seen that this is generally negative for the particle to be bound to the earth as the body gets away from the earth its speed decreases why because you remember i told you that the acceleration due to gravity is always vertically downwards so if the body is going up the force is acting vertically downwards and therefore it will reduce the speed of the particle so as the body gets away from the earth its speed decreases because of the pull back by earth's gravity if speed of the body becomes zero before it escapes the gravitational field it will be pulled back by the field you see it, if it becomes zero here it will come back as we do that if we throw a ball it goes to a certain height where its uh, speed becomes zero and then falls back this happens so if at a finite distance from the earth where the gravitational field is still active if the speed becomes zero the particle will be pulled back however if the speed of the body becomes zero just when it escaped the field it will not be pulled back suppose this is the boundary of the earth's field beyond which the earth field doesn't act if a particle reaches here it will not be attracted back if a particle is here it will be attracted back so we are supposing that just at infinity the velocity of the particle becomes zero and it is not it is not pulled back by the earth so the total energy of the particle is zero just at infinity its kinetic energy has become zero because v is zero its potential energy has become zero because r in the denominator uh, at infinity becomes zero so therefore the total energy of the particle at infinity has become zero now the particle and the earth they constitute a two body system which is under the mutual force of gravitation and therefore the energy of this system must be conserved the energy of the earth does not change much because earth is a huge system which means that the energy of the particle must be conserved if it is zero at infinity it must be zero at the surface of the earth and what is the total energy at the surface of the earth half mv squared minus g m m by r and this must be equal to zero this gives us v equal to v escape equal to 2 g m by r and plugging in the values of g m and r we can calculate that v escape 
is 11.2 kilometers per second. It is a huge velocity, but you see it depends upon the mass of the earth or any other planet and the radius of the earth or that planet. I am showing you again by this uh, animation particle comes back with a still higher speed it comes back with a still higher speed it comes back because velocity of these particles is less than the velocity of escape. However, when the velocity is beyond the velocity of escape then the particle escapes. For velocity is less than the velocity of escape it comes back for velocity greater than the velocity of escape it escapes and the velocity of escape is 11.2 kilometers per second. It is remember that artificial satellites are launched with speeds considerably smaller than this speed. Why? We do not want them to escape the gravitational field of the earth. We want them to be bound to the earth and revolve around the earth. There is generally a misconception that when a body is launched with the escape speed the gravitational field of the earth ceases to act. This is not so. The gravitational field of the earth acts at each point of the path of the escaping body because it decreases the speed of the particle. However, the speed becomes 0 only at infinity. At that point there is no gravitational field to pull the body back and the body escapes. I will give you the escape speed on three different bodies moon, mercury and Venus. You can calculate in fact knowing the mass of these bodies knowing the radii of these bodies one can easily calculate the root of 2 g m by r and these are the speeds. And look at this table again you see that these are very small 2.37, 4.25 compared with let us say Venus 10.39 kilometers per second or of earth 11.2 kilometers per second. So, what is the effect? The effect is that many particles that we find in the atmosphere of the earth they have velocities on these moon and mercury higher than the escape speeds and therefore, they escape field of these gravitational field of moon and mercury is weak the particle velocities are higher than the escape speed therefore, they escape which means that moon and mercury have no atmosphere unlike the earth or unlike Venus they have no atmosphere. Even on the earth this effect is felt many of the light gases like hydrogen and helium are highly deficient on the earth although they are most abundant in the universe on the earth they are deficient because these are light gases their thermal velocities are very large and sometimes they are larger than the escape speed from the earth and therefore, they escape. So, during the formation of the earth many of these gases much of these gases helium and hydrogen they just escape the earth and so the earth is deficient in these gases. Let us take an interesting case suppose the escape speed is equal to the speed of light that means that the is equal to the speed of light that means light also can escape that means if the light escapes what happens there is no light from that object and therefore the object becomes invisible such an object is called a black hole you see what is happening we are saying that the escape speed is equal to the speed of light that means that means light the all other things can escape but light cannot escape that means light is bound to that object cannot be seen from outside and therefore this object becomes black and it's called black hole so let us calculate this speed for the sun suppose sun becomes a black hole some day what would be the radius of the sun we are assuming that the escape escape speed from the sun would be the speed of light. So, we just plug in the numbers and we can find that the radius of the sun if it becomes a black hole is only 3 kilometers 
you know 3 kilometers is a very short distance but that is the radius of the sun if it ever becomes a black hole i can assure you that the sun will never become a black hole this is just a theoretical imaginary calculation sun will never become a black hole but what happens to the suppose sun becomes a black hole what happens to the to the orbit of the earth and uh, other planets remember we saw that the whole mass of the sun or earth or other planets can be supposed to be concentrated at the center of these objects for the other objects to be revolving around them so whether this mass is concentrated in 3 km radius or the actual radius of the sun doesn't matter what matters is the mass of the sun being felt at the center of mass of the sun and if this is not disturbed the uh, the planets will keep on going around the sun in their present orbits artificial satellites i have already pointed out that satellites are launched with velocities much less than the escape velocity why because we want to keep them in the earth's field we don't want them to escape and they are usually launched from a height of about 300 kilometers so that the resistance of the air is small and therefore not not much energy is lost in overcoming this drag due to air and they are launched with velocities of the order of 8 kilometers per second so that they can orbit the earth remember that artificial satellites also work under the effect of gravitational field therefore whether they are artificial satellites or whether they are natural satellites like the moon they obey kepler's law which is t square by r cubed constant t is the time period and r is the mean distance from say for a planet from the sun or for an artificial satellite from the center of the earth so t square by r cubed is constant t is the period of the artificial satellite and r is the distance from the center of the earth of this satellite and we can use this t square by r cubed as we use for other planets for example that uh, plugging in the values we can find that the satellites which revolve with a time period of one day which are used for communication etc these planets their distance is from the center of the earth it is 6.6 earth radii from the surface of the earth it is 5.6 earth radii which is roughly 36000 kilometers so these geostationary satellites they are at a height of about 36000 kilometers from the surface of the earth or it is 5.6 earth radii from the center of the earth the planets the uh, satellites which are at lower altitudes they are only a few hundred kilometers away say up to 1000 kilometers away and they move fast their time period is of the order of hours you can calculate again using t square by r cubed that their time period is of the order of hours say 60 minutes 70 minutes 80 minutes like that in the next lecture we intend to take the things like surface tension the properties of fluids